Aloha, everyone. Welcome to this edition of High Amp Facebook Live. I am your co-host, John Souza, along with Danny Gardner. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. We are here today uh, with a couple of cool things to present. We've got our uh, High Amp uh, May newsletter. That's hot off the presses. That'll be coming out to all of our members soon and posted on our social media accounts. And then we've got a cool interview that we did with Dr. Adrian Blow about a couple of books that he has coming out this summer. And uh, we thought we'd go ahead and play that clip in its entirety. Danny, anything else that you uh, can think of that would be interesting to share or? Not that I can think of. I just wanna wish uh, everybody a safe Memorial Day. And to remember, you know, what this day is truly about. What is this day truly about? Um, for me, uh, it's about um, forgiveness. As a refugee from Laos, I was impacted by the war. And, um, but it wasn't revealed until 2016 when President Obama allowed, you know, everybody to know that Laos was part of the war. So. We were impacted, but we couldn't talk about it. So as part of the healing process, it means something different as I get older and heal. And now that I do understand that atrocities and um, war crimes were just part of what happened, um, I look at this day differently. I, mm -hmm. I forgive you know, what has happened and I'm grateful for my freedom personally. So it's a big day for me. It's not just, you know, a barbecue day. It's huge. Wow. I yeah. really appreciate you sharing that. Which war are you referring to? When you the said Vietnam War. war. Yeah, I had a stepfather who was a Vietnam vet. And I remember him uh, with this big tattoo on his arm of a dagger. And he said he got it in Nam and just a hardcore guy. That, that mm -hmm. whole generation of young people who went to that war. Um, yeah, it, it sounds like they, you know, didn't uh, feel good about the war going over there. No. Yeah. And that was a time of huge social upheaval here in the States where the whole counterculture movement uh, began, you know, what, what we refer to, I guess, as the hippie generation. Yeah. But they were really about um, protesting these institutions uh, that were going to war, for example. <laughs> wow. But your story in particular is so powerful. You know, I'll bet we could dedicate an entire Facebook Live to, to sharing and listening someday. If you'd ever sure. Be I mean, I would love to because part of me wanting to become a therapist is to help people like myself heal, you know, just not culturally we we're we don't talk about trauma. We don't talk about pain. And the intergenerational trauma continues if we don't talk about it, if we don't heal. So I want to be, I guess, at the uh, ground level and help my generation recognize the amount of pain that we were, you know, we went through. And it's time to stop it. It's time to talk about it because there's no shame in it. So culturally, I am breaking a lot of barriers, but you know, I, I want to be a part of that movement. So yes, I mean, I, I'd love to talk about it someday. <laughs> well, gosh, I, I kind of regret having said anything about what we were going to do today, because I would absolutely just segue into this. <laughs> um, the, the talking about it, the acknowledgement of uh, President Obama, as you noted, and that being facilitative of a forgiveness process. Yes. That sounds like a really important dynamic. Oh, absolutely uh, incredible. I didn't think it would happen in my lifetime. I didn't think the US would recognize um, Laos as part of the Vietnam War. We were part of the secret war. That's what wow. you know our involvement was called. No the kidding. I, I, I had no idea about that. Yeah. yeah. I never read about that in any history books that I can think of. No, and you probably won't. I mean, you know, Laos um, history is 
part of certain states curriculum, but not all. I know it's part of California's and Illinois, but um, as far as like legislation, I'm not sure how many states actually teach it, but I think it's very important to do it because then it finally recognizes my culture. You know, we are like the, the hidden kids, the hidden culture, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. <sighs> and of course, uh, it wouldn't be too much of a pivot to start talking about things like uh, the genocide um, of the United States on the, the, the continent and the indigenous people that were there, uh, or of course here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. this sovereignty of the people. Um, unfortunately, uh, the United States and Europeans in general, uh, and I, I wanna be too I want to be careful about being too general with that, um, but it does seem to be something about this idea of colonization or um, taking something which is not theirs. <laughs> it seems to be a pattern. If we were just looking at this as NFTs, there is a pattern of that. I think there's the intention to help. Um, unfortunately, sometimes people who get together or come together with good intentions don't always act out that way because they don't know what's going to happen. So um, I'm a firm believer that anybody who has been there had good intentions. Mm. And it just, it turned ugly. You know, that's what war does. It's not I don't think it's the fault of any of the soldiers or anybody who, um, you know, who were involved. I think things just happen. You know, there's there was no way of stopping it. There was no way of stopping anything that has happened. And I think in order to heal, you have to forgive it. You have to forgive the people. Right. Um, I spent years looking for somebody to ask the question, what were you doing in my country? And I'll tell you the story online. I did meet somebody who was one of the first people placed there. He was 18 years old at that time. And he told me the entire story. And I met him by chance. And that helped. That started the healing process. And then it was like a, a year after that, the President Obama, you know, visited the country and told the entire world that Laos was part of the war and they were the secret war. So it was incredibly healing, but anyways, I don't want to take up any more time. You're not, um, this is, this is you know, amazing. Because I was really excited about Adrian's interview. Very yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, he's there and it's there, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Uh, but this Memorial Day and this time now that we're in, this is, uh, this is unique. And, and I it hadn't even occurred to me uh, that this could be something that you are so deeply connected to. So I'm very grateful for you allowing this conversation to unfold this way. Um, the, uh, I want to go back to something that you just did when I was describing patterns of taking uh, from your, uh, of, by European peoples, of indigenous peoples, uh, mm -hmm. in particular lands, uh, but resources in general, you might say is that you did a pivot to the positive intention behind that pattern. And, and I really respect that and appreciate that reminder that all, and this comes from, we'll say strategic family therapy uh, or, or systemic therapy that all, so, uh, um, most of the problems that we experience in family systems, we'll say, but we're, we can broaden this out to broader systems, the, uh, attempted solutions become problematic. Yes. And so tracing it back to what was that first solution all about? What were you trying to solve? And uh, if you had to imagine the Vietnam War or the secret war, uh, do you have any sense of what, was, what were folks trying to do that was helpful? Because Laos is landlocked. 
most people are not familiar with Laos. We have China to the north, um, uh, Vietnam to the east, Thailand to the west, and Cambodia to the south. So Vietnam and Cambodia were part of the war. So we were we had this like swing right all around us, underneath and um, to the uh, to the right side, and we didn't really have a choice. We were struggling as a country with communism, and it was difficult because the country was split north and south, and um, you know, and, and part of my understanding is Americans wanted to help this area. There were no borders that said, okay, now you're in Laos. They just knew what the lives were like mm -hmm. and the impact of the war surrounding. So I believe that they wanted to help us, but at the same time, they had to protect themselves. They needed a place that was safe and sacred and further away to hide. So my understanding is the CIA chose Laos to be that spot. And, you know, they recruited some people that really wanted freedom, that wanted to get out of the country. Uh, one of them was my grandfather. And he was more than happy to help, you know, because we were struggling. We were in a, uh, a country that was consistently bombed. In fact, Laos has been bombed more than any other country in the world. If you read about the secret war, it acknowledges it. Um, we're still, you know, fishing out the bombs out of the country. So it, it's still wow. an issue. Wow. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I, I got off tangent here. Um, I believe the intention was to help. But you can't put a strategic intention that is big pictured into every person that is participating. So my understanding is some of these atrocities and some of these war crimes, it just happened because there were young soldiers who were inexperienced, not anticipating the level of trauma harming others would have done to himself. It just happened, you know, that's the way that I looked at it. And that's the way that I understand it from the um, gentleman that I spoke to. He was 18 years old. He had no idea what he was doing there. He just joined the military because he was 1960 something and that's what you did you graduated you joined the military you go off to war and but it was just fascinating you know the, the guilt that he had and he's like i never spoke to another Lao person about this because i just wanted to say i'm sorry i just wanted to just you know tell everybody how sorry i was and i said you're forgiven you know, you have to forgive yourself. You didn't do this. You were part of a system. Right. You know, you had to go along with it. It happened. And when we were talking about it, he was like, I, I didn't realize how much I needed to hear from somebody who was actually directly impacted. You know, and as part of that process, he was able to forgive himself. But um, yeah, good intentions. Don't translate to everybody, especially during war. Right. Wow. <laughs> it's really resonating with me. We just watched this movie called The Book Thief last night, which is based on uh, a, a novel of the same name. Um, and I read the book along with my daughter a, a couple of years ago. and. Um, and it was a very powerful book and, and to see it put into a movie was pretty powerful and it's based on uh, World War II and Nazi Germany. And the transition that was still uh, pre World War II and then going into World War II and showing how uh, the German people were impacted during this time of Nazi Germany really coming into full power. Um, those who didn't agree with it completely. Uh, and being forced to say, okay, yeah, I, I think it's a bad idea, but I guess I'll be part of the book burning, or I don't really want to join the Nazi party, but if I don't, I'm not going to be able to get a job. So I guess I'm part of the Nazi party now. Um, I don't really agree with 
uh, treating Jews like animals. Uh, yet if I try to, to take care of them, I will be, become like them and I'll be, you know, whatever, the atrocities. Um, so it is something that we get caught up in and it's, it's only a few people who have the courage to be able to speak against that uh, for fear of, of being hurt yeah. or being without. And then those who are perpetuating those atrocities, absolutely, could, could, I could see how they would have such guilt and shame because um, you're really just going against everything that inside of you says this is wrong. Um, and at 18 or 19, my gosh. Okay, yeah. John, I'm so sorry my ride is here. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you. thank you so much for sharing, Danny, on this Memorial Day. I hope you have a wonderful time. Okay. Bye bye. Wow. Uh, I don't know how to follow up with anything after that. So that was pretty powerful. Um, you know, just being here in Hawaii, I remember uh, hearing stories from my grandparents uh, about Pearl Harbor, um, speaking of World War II, and then being kids on Oahu and seeing the Japanese Zero airplanes flying overhead um, and how in incredibly confusing and terrifying that was. Um, and now years later, uh, the uh, Japanese government has made every effort since then to ensure that they never uh, do anything like that again. And I applaud that government for their efforts um, because as we look at what's going on in uh, Eastern Europe, in um, Ukraine with Russia uh, trying to take over Ukraine. And we talk about these other war atrocities and war crimes. And after watching this movie last night, I'm reminded of the futility of war. Uh, yet it is really difficult to imagine a world without war because there always seems to be uh, those who feel they are uh, going to not have enough. And so they uh, respond by taking more than they need or those who are raised with deprivation of some sort. Um, for example, Adolf Hitler, who uh, perhaps wasn't nurtured enough or had his own uh, internal struggles with um, his sense of his sexual sexuality uh, which made him lash out against homosexuals or, um, you know, anything that related to Jewish people. There, there is so much there that I, I guess what I'm just wondering is, I would love to hear in the comments what people think some solutions are. And there probably isn't one solution, and there's definitely not a solution that would last a lifetime because there are always is going to be, a, there will always be a group that will come together uh, who feels it's, it's necessary and they'll justify violence of some sort or taking from other people. And it just takes a group of people who, are, um, who don't agree with that, but have to resort to some sort of a aggression to counter that, and that becomes war. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I'm reminded of the philosopher Heraclitus, uh, ancient Greek philosopher who said that peace is just a, a perfectly balanced tension. And he used the bow, like a bow and arrow as the, uh, the symbol of that, that um, the, the bow works because it's holding the tension of that string that's bending the wood. And maybe that's what peace is. It's just tension and balance. Um, I think at this point, what I'd like to do is just uh, forego what I thought I was going to share. And uh, I will, on our next Facebook Live, go ahead and uh, play that clip of Adrian Blow. But for today, I think what I'd like to do is just take a few 
moments here of silence to honor uh, everyone that's ever participated in a war or a battle. Um, of course, all the military people um, uh, and to all those who have been affected by war, uh, either directly or indirectly. And just to have this moment of silence to honor you on this Memorial Day. Mahalo for tuning in today, and we'll see you next week. Aloha.